Greetings, fellow residents of Florida and the surrounding areas. Here is our first weekly report of the unspeakable horrors unfolding in the Tallahassee region. The week began with a major counteroffensive against the monstrous hordes when thousands of educators, school support staff, parents, students, and other supporters of our public school system rallied for more funding for our schools so that our educators and all school staff can finally get the pay they deserve for the critically important work they do for our kids and our state. Today, we are demanding a decade of progress because we've had 20 years of disinvestment in our public schools. We want the state legislators to know that just like the nation watches Florida for other reasons, it is a moral outrage that you do not give equal pay to those that work in public education in this state. For those that are not chosen for special selected charter schools, let the sun shine. For those that mop the floors and those that clean the cafeteria, let the sun shine. Let the clouds back up. We come to say, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Today was about setting an expectation for lawmakers. Because as educators, we start every year by setting expectations. They start their work tomorrow. The governor will give his state of the state address tomorrow, and they will have to answer to the expectations we set out here today. But the threat continues. The terrifying creature that is the legislative session crawled from its pit on Tuesday. With the annual State of the State address from Florida's governor, and while the scene seemed harmless, a dark and brooding evil lay beneath the surface. Thankfully, a group of our champions were there to expose the truth. It's also time to unleash local democracy by repealing state restrictions and state preemptions that prevent local government from doing everything from alleviating high rents to raising the minimum wage. The United Way and their fantastic project called ALICE, which stands for people, families who are asset limited, they're broke, income constrained, can't make any money, but employed, they have jobs. These are the people that do everything that they're supposed to do each and every day, but still have to make decisions between food and medicine rent and child care, gas in the car, or no job at all. And what that report found in its last iteration, 3.2 million households, 45% of all the households in the state of Florida are working poor. More in Florida's failing economy, Governor DeSantis. Our poverty rate went up. It's now higher than the national average of 15.9%. Between 2000 and 2017, the typical Florida worker gained $1.27 in real wages. 17 years, $1.27 raise. Oh, unless you're a black worker, and then that was 17 cents over 17 years. I know why I'm here. We all know why we're here. Because we're not going to shut up, we're not going to stop speaking out, we're not going to stop speaking truth and power until they listen or we get them the hell out of this building. Thank you very much. In a Florida that works for all Floridians, discrimination has no place in our society. That's why Florida must join the 37 other states in this country that have passed legislation to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. On Wednesday, the beast from Tallahassee struck back again looking to strip all of our local governments of their power to help their communities and defend the working families who live there. First up was House Bill 3 in the Business and Professions Subcommittee. This bill would ban local governments from issuing occupational licenses for a wide range of skilled jobs and professions, leaving this role exclusively to the state which has already shown a lack of concern for workers and consumers. Communities deserve to have a say in how business is conducted in their backyard. This bill takes away the authority of those communities to do that. 
as we hear in this, in this body all the time, big government, one size fits all solutions do not work. This is a big government, one size fits all solution. This will create a laissez-faire, wild west structure across the state that we believe is dangerous for workers, dangerous for consumers, and bad for business owners. Licenses at the local level do provide a very valuable consumer protection uh, for our citizens. Most of these licenses do require a background check. And if you look at the types of licenses that we issue, they are professions that you would invite people to into your home to do work. And you would hope that those people would be having, would have some sort of oversight to make sure that um, they are, um, are, are welcome in your home. House Bill 3 passed the committee with all the Republicans and two Democrats voting for this. The bill now heads to its final committee stop, the House Commerce Committee. Later in the day, House Bill 305 was heard in the Workforce Development and Tourism Subcommittee. This titanic terror would take away the rights of local communities to enact any ordinances designed to protect workers from unfair treatment from employers. There are a lot of businesses out there that are not scrupulous and do not care about their employees. They see them as tools, they see them as instruments, not as human beings. I want to point out to you there is no balance here. All this legislation does is it tells local governments what they can't do. It doesn't say anything about what the state of Florida will do. You're now telling local governments you can't do anything but you're not putting anything in its place to help deal with the problems that gave rise to the local ordinances you're now trying to eliminate. This is a massive preemption. This is not just something that's narrowly tailored. This is the mother of all preemptions. This is a, a hydrogen bomb dropping on employees across the state of Florida size pre preemption. This broad language that we are presenting in many of our bills really should just say we're trying to take power away from local government. And we do it in increments, and we do it little by little when no one's paying attention. And then we find ourselves with very big problems on our hands. And I believe that Miami-Dade and Broward County are at the forefront of many of those concerns. And I applaud our local government that are from all sides of the political spectrum that have had the courage to make decisions that benefit the residents that they represent. Our counterparts at the local level are elected and accountable to those they're elected by the people and they're accountable to the people who elect them. We don't like it when people tell us what to do and I don't think we ought to be telling other people how to do their job. If this bill passes, local laws already on the books that protect workers from wage theft and discrimination will be wiped away and no pro-worker local ordinances will exist in the future. This is a major threat to Florida, one that we will fight to the bitter end. Florida is special for many reasons. One thing all Floridians enjoy is the right of direct democracy through our ability to change our constitution through the citizens' initiative. This process has brought us a higher minimum wage, smaller class sizes, protection for the environment, and many other benefits. But the big business lobby and other evildoers don't like direct democracy. They like pulling all the strings through the legislature, funded by their deep pocket campaign contributions. Put the question to the voters and let's have that debate about do you want to give up the last vestige of direct democracy in the state of Florida? And now we look at, at this package in front of us. What does it do? Once again, it shortens the lifespan on signatures. That means more money, more paid signature gatherers, only the billionaires and billionaires can be a part of it. It raises the threshold for Supreme Court review. Well, that's also decreasing the time. Because the nice thing about having the Supreme Court review an initiative after 10% threshold has been reached is that you can find out your deficiencies. You can find out what's wrong with the initiative and you have time to go back to the drawing board. If you have to wait until you get 50% and then you get your review from the Supreme Court and they say, ah, oh, no, this thing falls short, you're done. You gotta start over again because you don't have the time. We need the citizen initiative process. As Floridians for Freedom, we're going to oppose this. We're going to oppose it um, 
There may be some opportunities to do some things that are going to make it better. But at the end of the day, while I agree that um, we need to be very careful on how we amend the Constitution, I would be very sad if you took away my ability to amend the Constitution because I have tried every opportunity. And at the end of the day, sometimes in order to make real political change, amending the Constitution was the right answer. And so when the legislature will not act, the people have the power to take action. That is a good thing. This bill is a further attempt to erode that process because there are members in this chamber that just fundamentally disagree with it. The Citizens Initiative process has been under attack for more than a decade. Last year, the legislature made it almost impossible for the people to amend their constitution. This year, they're back to finish the dastardly deed. If JC1 passes, it will be too expensive and too cumbersome for initiatives to happen at all. Through all the gloom and doom of the first week, we had defenders there to fight the spreading evil, and they shared their thoughts with us. Hi, my name is Kara Martin Howard. I'm representing Hillsborough County Teachers Association, and I've been spending this week here at the Capitol representing my educational support professionals. I think that this is an excellent opportunity for all to come down and see how our legislators make the bills and decisions that they make for us so that we can have a say-so in what goes on in our cities, our counties, and here in Florida. This has been a wonderful opportunity, and I encourage anyone and everyone to come down, bring your families, students, to see how the legislative process works and to be involved. Uh, hello, my name's David Gates. I'm with International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 177 in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm the political coordinator, and we're here trying to help out, trying to make our representatives and senators aware of what's going on. We need a lot more of our union members to show up for this because they do not know what goes on. Their eyes need to be opened up because when you come here, you see things that you wouldn't believe. You would not care for what goes on here as far as I'm concerned as a union member. And we need more members here because we don't have enough coming, and we need to rattle cages more. And that's what I'm here for. It was a tough first round in our fight against the monstrosities rising from the pit in Tallahassee, but we can't give up. We'll see you back here next week for our next report from Tallahassee.